they don't even they don't even want to see me anymore. They're just like, where's the cat? <laughs> That's better. Everybody's show going. Us, show us the cat. <laughs> where's the cat? It's, it's fine. Whatever. Just fuck the cat. You just want to see a cat. Yeah, yeah nobody cares about me anymore. Nobody cares. Just like, where's the kitten? <laughs> Uh, I should just leave up like a live webcam of Bridget all day. Probably make a fortune that way. Lots of people do. do. Live Bridget cam, just like what's she doing? She's sleeping. She's playing with a mousey. She's sleeping. Just make like a cat farm or something. Just hundreds and hundreds yeah. of cats. It'd be like a There's reality show. Through, I forget which humane society, but um, I forget the website now. But you can like play online with kittens in shelters all over the world. And I tried to do it, but it takes forever to load. And that was like a waiting list. <laughs> a waiting list so, to play with kittens remotely across the Internet. Yes. 21st century, everybody. <laughs> remote, remote kitten access. Kittens are going to be the new prostitutes. Like you're going to be paying somebody to play with a kitten for an hour. <laughs> Illicitly. They'll be like, what do you want? What do you want? Uh, and we love $50. <laughs> Bridget should have her own Twitter account. Bridget can't type. No, cats can't type. And if they did, they would just type meh, whatever, hungry, whatever. Oh, I hear it's Telltale Jingle. Here she comes. There yeah. she Oh, dear. Your, your adoring public wants to see you. <clears throat> here, dumbass. Don't get shirty because I called you a dumbass. You're very cute. Did you just say shirty? Uh, yeah. You're very, oh, that's very old world there. Hi, Bridget. Don't play with my headphones. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Internet. I just got back from having a snack. I have cat food, bro. <laughs> All right. So we've got a smorgasbord of stupid tonight, as we are wont to do. Shall we, get, yeah, shall we get to it? Let's get to it. Okay. <laughs> Crazy for feeling so lonely. Oh, whoops! Very loud. I hit the I hit the wrong button there. You, you were explaining about. Uh, yeah. Lost out. You were explaining about disembodied orgasm his, hippo. I now live in a house where everybody goes to bed at like 9 p.m. And disembodied orgasm hippo is very loud. Yes. So he now lives in my closet and he can't be on the show these days because, I mean, I guess you could play the YouTube video I put up of him. But that's about it. Because I'll wake up the whole house and they will not appreciate that. Especially my nephew who sleeps right next door. <laughs> Disembodied orgasm hippo kind of freaks him out. He thinks it's really strange. Uh, apparently partway in there we lost music because or sound altogether. So that's why the music was loud, because the button was off. Oh, well. Shit happens. I'll try to edit around it. I'm going to look like an idiot this week. Well, when don't I? That's well, weird. you know, you got me framed right right away. You can't. Yeah, I, I know. If if one thing goes right and then ten things go wrong, that's that's just how it goes. I still have my liar, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> oh, written a bunch of other stuff on that since then. So you and I both used to be LARPers. Um, yeah. Well, you still do sometimes. I I haven't in a while. Once in a while. And when we in our organization we had a rule. And that was no mind altering substances while you are playing. Which turned into you may not be visibly impaired. 
they changed it. Yeah. So you could do your mind altering substances as long as you were not visibly impaired. <laughs> well, speaking of visibly impaired. Here we go. This one comes to us from uh, where, where is this? Oregon. Um, woman's car attacked by self-identified high elf battling evil. Oh. Last thing a woman from Northeast Portland probably expected when she got up Tuesday morning was she she would be attacked by a sword wielding elf. That's what happened around 7 a.m. She drove a red BMW by the intersection of Southeast 7th and Morrison. A man dressed in chainmail with a helmet, shield, and carrying a sword and staff ran into traffic and started attacking her car. She called 911, reporting that a pirate was attacking her car. But when they got there, uh, they detained Conrad Bass of Glendale, Oregon. Bass told, or well, it's Bass, told officers he wasn't a pirate, but a, quote, high elf engaged in battle with the evil Morgoth. Bass, who was... Obviously. Bass, who was cited for criminal mischief and uh, transport to Providence Hospital, also told officers he had been taking LSD. Not a lot of people know that the M in BMW stands for Morgoth. <laughs> Little known fact. Uh, yeah, don't so larp and trip balls. That morning, he got up, and that was the morning too, 7 a.m. 7 a.m. He got up, put on chain mail and a helmet, and got armed and took LSD. This was a conscious choice. Well, he might have still been tripping balls from the night before. No, I'm pretty, you can't, do you really think How he got put on? How many times have still been at the fucking Denny's when the sun came up? Yeah, but, the, well, okay, maybe. But, yeah. Yeah, you're right, possibly. Just don't, don't LARP and trip balls at the same time. It's going to fuck you up so bad. <laughs> Especially boffer LARP, dude. No. Uh, moral, LSD gets you elfed up. Oh, oh, D.A. Scott, why? Why? LSD can last 12 hours. That's, and that's the thing. You don't. You have weapons in your hand. Yeah, he was still fucked up from the night before. It's LSD. And people are going, yeah, it's, this is like, this is the modern Don Quixote. He's not seen all. He's just fucked up. How old was this guy? Um, let's see. It doesn't say how old he was. But he had to be over 18 because they wouldn't have put his name in the story if he wasn't. Right. He wasn't a minor. Yeah. And he attacked her. Did you ever see the movie Enchanted? Yes. Yes, I've been forced to sit through that. Yes. I love that movie. It's kind of like Disney's own takedown of the Disney princess genre. And it's Amy Adams as a Disney princess and it's perfect. And her prince gets to New York. And the first thing he does is attack a bus. Because he thinks it's a dragon or something. So he sticks his sword through the roof of the bus. And later on, she meets this old lady. And she's like, oh, yeah, I met your prince. He tried to kill me. And she's like, that's wonderful. <laughs> it kind of sounds like this, like Prince Edward in New York City. How do you file an insurance claim on this? Well, the thing is, do you file the claim for the high elf attack or for your car clearly be infested with more <laughs> Do you file a claim for elf attack or demon infestation? As, you know, I think about some of the no. shit that happens on our show. No. Uh, Kitty decided, hey, I've got claws. Guess what? Claws. Um, you think about some of the shit that happens on our show, you gotta wonder. There, there must be like an, uh, you know how Mulder and Scully had the X Files. There's got to be like a State Farm has an X Files department oh my to God, deal with. So you know they've got to to deal with specifically with shit like this. You know, Geico and State Farm and whatnot. They've got a specific. They've got their own X Files department to deal with this crap. Uh. There's some guy in the basement whose job it is. To just deal with the demon infested cars and elf attacks. 
So uh, I was I was changing gears here. I was fortunate enough to make it through high school and college back in my day. Um, but I do know some of my my fellows who worked. And if you if you don't, gra- I don't know if it's different in other countries, but in America, if you don't graduate, you don't even go to the ceremony for everybody else graduating. You, you're you're not there. Right. Yeah, it's just not, you know. So and and God bless her for being embarrassed enough to do this. But still, this is not a way to handle your issues. Um, points for originality. Those point exact same points taken away for calling in a bomb threat. Ex Kinnipat student calls in bomb threat at graduation to hide being a dropout. Wow. Police have arrested a 22 year old woman who they say phoned in Quinnipiac. bomb. Quinnipiac. 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 Okay. Quinnipiac. Okay. Um, they phoned in bomb threats to the university on Sunday in an attempt to get commencement ceremonies canceled so her family wouldn't know she wasn't graduating. Danielle Shea of Quincy, Massachusetts, being held on $20,000 bond after giving police a detailed confession on Sunday. Camdale police say Shea didn't attend university this year, but her mother paid thousands of dollars she thought was for her daughter's education. Then when graduation arrived, Shea panicked when relatives didn't see her name on the graduation roster. Say Shea made two calls to university saying there was a bomb for the school's College of Art and Sciences was delayed and moved indoors to the campus athletic area. It reportedly called the Connecticut University's Public Safety Department and said there was a bomb in the library. She allegedly called 17 minutes later saying there were several bombs on campus. You haven't cleared out graduation. That's not a good idea. Did you really think, like, your mom's paying for college and you just don't go. Did you really think that was never going to get figured out? Seriously. They're, they're going to know this shit. They're going to. Yeah. Your ass is going to get caught. Two. Yeah. Did you figure out? I mean, you went to college for a little bit. Did you figure out what two and two, how that equals? It's, yeah. It's... Did you take logic if then? And of course, immediately, um, Calls were quickly traced back to Shay, and she was arrested. She was poorly f- oh, this is sad. She was poorly found inside the girls' sports arena, wearing a graduation cap and gown. Oh, I understand. You know, this is one of those cases where you bite the bullet. It sucks. I mean, it it fucking sucks. Maybe explain that you're not going to college before you're parents pay all those bills yeah it's fucking expensive maybe save them a few grand yeah because at some point they are going to figure it out like when you cost them 20 grand in bail money calling in a fake bomb good job and that's just you know she she i understand what she was trying to fucking do but i mean I don't. Did you really think you weren't going to get caught? <laughs> That's the thing. We take in the 21st century in America, we take this bomb shit kind of serious now. Yeah. In case you hadn't noticed. But also, did you think that if there just wasn't a ceremony, they were never going to figure out that you were <laughs> your college? Yeah, it's just like, you know what? If I get this canceled, I'm home free. No. They're never going to hold graduation again. Because they'll just move it to the next day or the next day or the next day after that. Or your parents will ask to see your diploma at some point. Oh, yeah. That, and that, are you going to forge one or are you just going to keep going your entire life? This was not a good plan. This was Maybe not a good plan if she had finished her college education, she could have come up with a better plan. plan. But then she wouldn't have to. Uh, Stay in school, kids. Stay in school. Especially if somebody's paying for it for you. Seriously. Fucking ingrate. I finished paying off college last year. Last fucking year. I'm 37 years old. I finished paying off college last year. Somebody's paying for college for you. You fucking go to class. You know, damn kids. 
You know, our next story, I'm reminded of, of uh, a line from uh, one of my favorite movies. Say what you will about National Socialism, at least it's an ethos. Except, That's you know, the line I was trying to conjure last week. Yeah. I did that they said they were nihilist, man, and I couldn't come up with the next one. And it, it is an ethos, but, you know, you might want to check and see what that ethos entails. Tell me, kids, what's wrong with this picture? Um, yeah, this guy. What's wrong with this one, kids? Put on your thinking caps. Can you I mean, figure it out? Part is, technically, he's right. Yeah. I have the right to wear it. New York cab, ta cab driver insisted Friday on his right, hands down, to wear a Nazi armband, even if the Taxi and Limousine Commission says otherwise. CBS's 2's Lou Young reported Friday evening Gabriel Diaz, 26, spoke outside of his family's home in Throng's Neck section of the Bronx. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. This guy's Latino? You didn't see the picture of him? No. Look at the, look, scroll down. What's wrong with this? You're getting it now? What's wrong with this picture? Buddy, come on. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember exactly. People are like, the Nazis hate black people? Yeah, I don't remember. What's the word? It's It sh starts with an S. I don't even want to say it because it's, it's a nasty German word for black people. I don't, I don't like it. But they even had their own special word for it. Um. Yeah. Quote, I am a national socialist, what you guys call a Nazi. I am. I'm a believer of it. Well, I believe they existed. And good for you for not being the possible Holocaust deniers of last week. That said, you might want to Wikipedia. Because <laughs> you are right now the real life version of that Dave Chappelle. <laughs> Skit. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Except you're not lying. <laughs> uh, so uh, use your functioning eyes and Wikipedia that shit. Yeah, it's kind of I know I love how this story kind of buries the lead, you know. He, you know, for, all right, just to address the, the, the headline, no, you don't have the right. You have the right to do it in public, but who, if your employer has a dress code and it doesn't include a swastika, you're not allowed to wear it. Well, if you have the right to wear it, they have the right to fire you. Right. This, this is the problem with all the people who, my free speech is being violated. No, it's not. No, it isn't. You have the right to say stupid shit and other people have the right to make you suffer consequences. For yes, it. that's the way it works. But this is one you of the are not free from the consequences of your actions. Do you think nobody's I'm, I'm reminded of that scene in Lethal Weapon where he goes, but but you're black. <laughs> Do you think nobody's tried to sit him down and, and talk to him mm -hmm. about this? Buddy, buddy listen. Let me explain why this isn't working out. <laughs> uh, I just. <sighs> say what you will of National Socialism. All mm. right. Remember last week we had the guy with the uh, tried to write, wrote the note on the uh, back of his receipt to rob yes. the bank. Yeah. And we thought, well, maybe he could have just gotten somebody else's receipt. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's, he just wasn't. Someone had to top his ass. They always have to up the ante on us. Man tries to rob bank 30 minutes after giving cashier full name and address. Well, they have to know where to send the money. <laughs> Ooh. 
Who gave him the shiner? Probably security. Dean Smith had stormed into a Barclays branch armed with a bread knife. Bread knife. A hapless criminal wearing socks over his shoes tried robbing a bank with a bread knife just minutes after giving the cashier his full name and address. Armed with a knife, Dean Richard Smith, 27, stormed a Valley's bank demanding money. But Smith was forced to leave empty handed despite an elderly gentleman in his 70s he was standing next to offering him. Oh, that's that's offered him 20 pounds. I'll give you 20 pounds if you just leave. Does Wales still use pounds? Yeah. Have they not switched to the euro? No. England doesn't, doesn't hasn't switched their currency. Really? Yeah. Ireland is on the euro. Huh. Anyway. Smith had gone to Barclays Bank Barclays Bank oh, branch. Can you stab someone with a bread knife? You can stab somebody with anything if you push hard enough. Because it doesn't have a point. Bread knives have a rounded end and then they're serrated. You can stab bread, anybody. Bread it, knives are for sawing, not thrusting. Doesn't matter. You push something hard enough into somebody, you can stab them with it. Yeah, but you're going to have to push pretty fucking hard. <laughs> um, it's go, not fucking pointy. <laughs> Smith the guard to uh, the branch in Boot Street uh, on April 15th to change his address, but just 30 minutes later, Smith was seen on closed circuit TV wearing a jacket with his hood up, socks over yes, his I shoes. Know Ireland isn't part of the UK, people. Good God, I'm Irish. Um, I'm aware. <laughs> oh, the choir pedantic. Really? Oh. They just had to let you know that. He did, they knew something, and they wanted to make sure you knew they knew it. Because, yeah. Um, she could... Not a bread knife, cousin, because it's dull, you twit. It'll hurt more. He was shouting. He was rushed, but not angry or agitated. He sounded desperate. She raised the alarm by pressing the panic button as she tried to keep the situation calm. It was only when he heard that they planned to lock the doors that he left. After the incident, they closed the bank and made a cup of tea for the elderly gentleman. Oh, See, that's that's how, the, you know, uh, say what you will about America and America, we tough and shit. The, the fact that the old guy went, look, 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 fellow, I'll give you 20 pounds if you just go. Yeah, you're, you're I'm, I feel sorry for your ass. You got your socks on top of your shoes. Just here you go, man. I'm, I'm trying to help. Yeah. <laughs> and I love the bank made him a cup of tea. That's. You sit down over here. I know you. I know you tried, dude. I know you tried. He deserves a cup of tea for that. He deserves a nice cup of tea and some biscuits. Now I'm still working on people thinking I don't know Ireland isn't part of the UK. You've got Irish citizenship, don't you? Yes. It's on your bloody passport. Um. Uh... This next one makes me sad. One of my cousins in Dublin watches the show. I'm up on Ireland's status. Thanks. Spe well, speaking of hometowns and where you come from, this next story makes me sad because it's from my hometown. And, it's, and it's really fucking stupid. And it pretty much says a bunch you need. To, it it, it kind of defines South Carolina pretty well right here sadly i just upset over stale cinnamon roll woman threatens to shoot down mount pleasant burger king customer of a burger king in mount pleasant threatened to shoot employees earlier this week because her cinnamon roll was stale but is arrested in the ordeal, but uh, uh, officers from the Mount Pleasant Police Department saw the suspect's car leave the scene, but could not catch up with the vehicle. Police Inspector Chip Gooch said Thursday that an investigator was following up Ooh, some that's suspects. that's an unfortunate name. Gooch. Yeah, G-O-O-G-E. Gooch. Chip Gooch. Chip Gooch. Yeah. The woman was one of the three who had ordered food when she started shouting at employees. According to the report, she said her cinnamon, her cinnamon roll wasn't fresh. And became upset when she learned that only one bun was left. 
The woman also argued about bad service, but the woman and her two friends, though, walked out after a manager came to speak with them. But she soon returned and said she was going to, quote, shoot everyone inside. Another witness said the woman's hand was stuffed inside her purse when she issued the threat. Quote, I'm going to shoot down the place, she said. I think the worst part of this is that this woman expected to get a fresh Cinnabon at a Burger King. <laughs> Have you ever seen how they make Cinnabon? Yeah, it's... They're, they're like, horrible. you eat it anyway because it's delicious. But, but they're horrible. They're just, you watch the people make these, there's no food in the Cinnabon. No, it's not food. It's it's everything but food. And you gotta get extra icing. You gotta pour extra, like, mm. jizz on top of it. <sighs> because it's necessary and you need it. <sighs> you, yeah. There's nothing about it that's fresh or food-related. Duquette said, well, that escalated quickly. Yeah, it did. And then to expect to get something fresh when it's not even made there. You know, it arrives at the fucking Burger King frozen on a truck. And so the kid puts it in a microwave. The A. Scott Jr. Let she who is without cinnamon rolls cast the first stone. You know, you know what's really good is those little Cinnabon bites at Taco Bell that have the, ice, the jizz icing inside them. <laughs> and, and, and in that way, they're kind of just like little cinnamon sugar covered. <laughs> but they're delicious. Really good. Oh, as if we didn't need any more reason not to eat at Taco Bell. No, they're really good, though. I mean, once you're... I suppose I've ruined them a bit by calling them cinnamon sugar covered testicles full of jizz, but they taste really good, though. You know, there's a reason the Better Business Bureau doesn't pack heat. Because that's not how you solve this shit. It's not like you know, that would be interesting. That's the, that's probably next fall on CBS. <laughs> CSI CBC, New York. Yeah. CSI Better Business Bureau. Because how did she think this was when you threaten to shoot some that is shit is a crime. And it doesn't matter if you have a gun or not. If you get if you walk up to somebody and say, hey, guess what? No, verbal assault is still assault. I'm going to shoot you in the face right now. If you say that to someone, congratulations, you've just committed a crime. You're not allowed. Also, also proportionate <laughs> response. You got a stale Cinnabon. Not a good reason to shoot people. No, Sh I'm going to shoot the plate down the place. You know, if you got a gun in your I purse, I want I my money back. <laughs> I'd like to select a different dessert. Hmm. I'm going to give you a bad survey review on the little receipt thingy. Proportionate responses. I'm going to shoot you now. And people wonder why we're kind of concerned about the open carry guns everywhere policies. Because for every responsible gun owner, you're going to have an idiot. Like, well, you know, the only thing that can take down a bad Cinnabon customer <laughs> is a good Cinnabon customer. <sighs> Our last one tonight is from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Which is fun to say. Murfreesboro? Murfreesboro. Murfreesboro. No. Murfreesboro. Murfreesboro? According to CNN, which, yeah. <laughs> you and your Anderson Cooper. It's a fun place to say, but I think this is probably going to drop the tourist attraction down a little bit. Um, police, man tried to have sex with ATM picnic table. They have ATM picnic tables? No, oh, ATM comma. comma, yeah. Man was attempted, was arrested at a Freesboro bar Friday night for attempting to have sex with an ATM and later a picnic table. Right to arrest well, reports. you know, if the bank's gonna fuck you. That's my job. According to the arrest report, Lonnie Hutton, 49. Old enough to know better. It's old enough to be my dad. 
Wait, no, wait. Close. Where did he try to stick it? He pulled down his pants and underwear, exposing his genitals, and attempted to have sexual intercourse with the ATM. Responding officers found Hutton, still nude from the waist down, walking around the bar, thrusting his hips in the air. Officers took Hutton outside, told him to sit on a wooden picket table. The report said he then exposed himself again and engaged in sexual intercourse with the wooden picnic table. Where did he try to stick it in the ATM? You know, it could. Ju- this could just be kind of really sad because if it fits, where the money comes out is this big. Yeah, and where your card goes in is this that big. big. Yeah. So, I mean, there's really nothing of the appropriate size or shape for that sort of thing. No, no. Was he just humping it? And if you're just humping it, you could keep your pants on. <sighs> I, just, I love how when the cop showed up, That's it's just why it's called dry humping. <laughs> I love how he's, he's just he's walking around the bar, thrusting his Thank hips you. when the Stop cops walk in. your claws into my ankle. Thank you. I love you. Sorry. You got it. You got to wonder if the cops walk into the bar and they see this. And they're like, this is my job. This is my fucking job. I'm not, you know, saving the president. I'm not stopping a heist. I'm not I'm protecting a picnic table from rape. I yes. And a picnic. Those things got splinters. You don't want that nowhere near your dick. No, you don't. That ain't happy. And honestly, you don't want money anywhere near your dick either, because money is some of the grossest shit. Think about where people keep money. I think about how many people handle money in a given day. I know where you stick money on a sweaty strip. I mostly use this these days. It's covered in like cocaine residue and STD. I use I use this fucker most of the time because, you know, cocaine. Side note, did you hear that they uh, they checked the water in Britain and apparently it's so it's actually polluted with cocaine? Really? With the metabolized remains of cocaine, it's actually polluted the, the British water supply. In England? In England, yeah. Do they do that much cocaine in England? I think it's a problem if it's got no place to go. Do they know the 80s are over? No, nah, I don't think the Tories do, no. Um, cocaine's not really the thing anymore. We've moved on to bath salts and embalming fluid now. I guess the first thing we learned this week is yes, even someone old enough to be your dad can try to fuck an ATM. Well, yeah, obviously they can, but will. How do you write that up, man? How do you put that in a police report? Suspect was attempting to have sexual intercourse with an automatic teller machine. I actually had to write that the fuck down. Yeah. I mean, that's in a police report somewhere. Forever. That's on your permanent record. Whenever anyone Googles the Bless words the, the words Lonnie Hutton, it's going to immediately come back with man tried to fuck ATM. Well, let's be honest. That kind of sounds like the name of a guy who would try to fuck an ATM. We learned this week that there is such a thing as proportionate response, especially when it comes to fast food, and it does not involve handguns or any kind of firearm at all, for that matter. We've because we've seen the fuckers with automatic weapons. Don't mix guns and cinnabons. Why do you need a gun to go to Burger King anyway? Have you seen some of the neighborhoods Burger Kings are in? You go to the Burger King out on the uh, interstate. At the rest stop? Yeah. Yeah. Because it might be a little grody, but at least you won't need a gun. We've learned that. No, because at rest stops, you get like drifters. We've learned that in the course of committing a crime, you will leave evidence. Try to limit the amount. 
try to not have that evidence be your name and address, for right. instance. The police are paid to do their job. Let them earn their money. Let them. Yeah, you know, don't, 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 don't do it for them. They, 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 they they've got. They were specially, they were specially trained to find you. Let them use their training. Learn that if you're going to choose certain um, political state stances, the first place you need to look is a mirror. Just saying, yeah. dude. Just saying. Or, you know, Wikipedia. Just the tiniest bit of research. A little bit of research. Before you choose an ethos. Do, does this political group hate me? Would they kill me if they had the chance? These are good things to know. They wouldn't kill you. They just liquidate you. Oh, terminology. You get sad trombone. Um, we've learned that if your parents have shelled out that much fucking money, for your college education, and you fuck them over. Go to fucking class. Go to fucking class. Shit. But if you do fuck them over, have the you at least have the cojones to stand up and say, "Look, mom, dad, I fucked up." Because it's not going to disappear. It's not going to go away. You can't pretend like it didn't shit fucking happen. Right. This shit happened. Yeah. I mean, damn. Good luck with the rest of your life. Now that you didn't finish college. And have a terrorist threat on your record. Yeah. Because say what you will about it, it's kind of a prerequisite these days, unless you want to just be, you know, un unless your ambition in life is to be unemployed. Because even for a lot of retail jobs, they require a degree now. I know. Like if you want to get past cashier at, at retail establishments, you have to have a degree. Don't don't try and don't try and scam your parents because they're always going to find that shit out. That shit's forever. Your parents are not going to go away. You're not going to, like, you know, drift on. That, that shit's forever. If you have somebody willing to pay for your education, get that fucking education. No. That shit's expensive. And lastly, we learned um, nothing wrong with LARPing, but don't LARP and trip. Yeah. And don't LARP with the mundanes. I always hated every now and then the group in, in New York would do a game at like a public place. Like they did a game at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Yeah. While it was open. And that always weirded me out. I didn't like it because you're walking around a place where there are normal people. And they freak out easy, man. If they don't and know what the well, shit's going on. It, it means we really have to like maintain the masquerade. And I'm like, no, no. No, because we're still going to no. look weird and be acting weird and be shooting a lot of rock, paper, scissor and just doing stuff that freaks out the mundane. And it always weirds me out. And I, I was always a little uncomfortable with it, mainly because for everyone who's responsible enough to pull that shit off, we got five in the club that ain't. Yeah, they just ain't. There's going to be that one guy that trips balls and winds up attacking somebody's fucking car. <laughs> Or like trying to check the aura of some five-year-old. <laughs> Don't be that guy. Uh, for Asgard! You just, just fucking come out there. And <laughs> <laughs> you only get to be that guy if your last name is Hemsworth. Because uh. he could pretty much do that anywhere and nobody would mind. That's some deter that's a deterrent motherfucker because chainmail's heavy. To be trip that tripping out of your mind enough to still be able to pull that shit off. Yeah. You got some belief going on there, motherfucker. Well, you can get like aluminum chainmail though. That's not heavy. Uh that's cheating. Yeah. That's fucking cheating. <sighs> and the thing is, if the car had puncture wounds, like was he carrying a real sword? He was carrying a sword and staff. Because apparently he was working on the dual wielding rules where he could be, you know, a major. If you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you're gonna trip balls, you shouldn't be allowed near sharp things. This is why Skyrim shouldn't let you dual re dual wield. 